since the killing of Tyree Nichols, and it comes at a time when the city has been pushing to increase the numbers of officers on the force. But why would anybody be an officer when the fucking police chief came out before the body evidence, before the body cam came out and said, man, this is the worst thing I've ever seen, man. Wait till y'all see this, man. I mean, this shit is bad, bad. I mean, they fucked him up, man. You ain't wait, watch. Wait till you see this video. Right, fuck to She's going to fuck to G investigator April Thompson shows how police recruiting may now get a second look. They were the weekend fairs that had folks lining up, all for a chance to be a part of Memphis Best in Blue. But then the Tyree Nichols video was released. Incidents uh, like these to, you know, that happened in Memphis, the, the murder, really, really uh, put a spotlight, a negative spotlight on Memphis such that um, it's going to be really challenging to get people to want to go into law enforcement. City Council member Rhonda Logan heads up the Public Is Safety so? Committee for the Memphis City Council and believes now police recruiting will be even more challenging. This, among other things, are really changing the way and the, the perception that young people have. Of so, so this fucking, fucking bird brain fucking idiot <laughs> Is she's in charge of this, right? And she can't flip it. She can't say, well, look, since I'm in charge of police recruiting and shit with the city council, hey, everybody, what about the 15 gazillion million times that police save people's lives and fucking save people from danger as opposed to this one Tyree Nichols incident? Mm -hmm. She's conceding that, yeah, this one incident fucked everything up and there's nothing we can do about it what about highlighting some of the good shit that cops do all the fucking babies they save from choking all the fucking women they save from getting their asses beat or killed by their fucking boyfriends all the fucking um some thugs that get shot up in the street and they get given rides to the hospital or they come and stop the fucking other thugs some thugs from shooting what about all the fucking times they fucking um, just save people doing random shit? You fucking get a flat tire and shit. And everybody looking at you like you crazy and the fucking cop sees you and he pulls over and helps you out. What about all that shit as a, compared to this one fucking incident? And you supposed to be, and this bitch is supposed to be like, she probably got a thousand degrees and she can't fucking flip the shit. You can't, you, she not on here talking about good cops. She just talking about this one incident. Of uh, public safety, law enforcement. And it comes at a time when Memphis is in need of more officers. Logan says the city council passed a resolution approving 2,500 officers. But the latest report from MPD showed they had just under 2,000. She says it's going to take some relationship building to get those numbers up. Hopefully, you know, we can come together and look at ways in which we can get back to the policing that we, my generation grew up on, really. Bitch, it was one incident. <laughs> what do you mean the policing that your generation grew up? What the fuck mm -hmm. is she talking about getting back to the policing? She, they act like the Scorpio squad killed 10 people a day. She trusting the police, um, knowing that they're there for our safety and security. She says it means pretty much going back to community policing. Retired police lieutenant Tyrone. And you know, community police means officers on their feet engaged in the community. And next thing you will have some people talking, so damn, man, why cops always coming up to me, man? Every time I turn around, the cops, why they always got, they don't believe their neighborhood, man. God, man, I was just walking down the street and the cop came up to me and started talking to me, man. They don't do that to white people. Man, there's no fucking solution, man. On Curry, now executive director of the Afro-American Police Association, says building positive relationships is what the association has been about for years. Community policing is at the crux of that. About a decade ago, we had 10 what we call COAC units, which are simply community policing units throughout the city of Memphis. There was a unit in every area of uh, the city. And those units were charged to uh, 
build a relationship with the businesses and schools. But he says Memphis has moved away from that. And as a result, there has been an increase in crime in Memphis. He wants to see a renewed focus on prevention and intervention, in addition to enforcement. Things like officers in schools and community centers interacting with students during programs, mentoring. Yeah, playing volleyball with fucking sun teens will fix it. Why didn't why didn't anybody else think of that before, man? I mean, goddamn. I mean, that's the key, man. Volleyball, man. And community centers interacting with students during programs, mentoring, and leading clothes and food drives. What are you saying? Free stuff, man. <laughs> Play volleyball with them and give them free stuff, and the crime rate sure to go down. Officers in schools and community centers interacting with students during programs, mentoring and leading clothes and food drives. What do you say to people who say, well, all that is good, but where do you get the resources to be able to? From the white people <laughs> tax dollars, man. White tax dollars, man. Where the fuck else do you get? Where does every city <laughs> get their fucking money for these programs at, man? Clothes and food drives. What do you say to people who say, well, all that is good, but where do you get the resources to be able to we don't even have enough police officers to be able to to do programs like that. And um, is that policing? That is policing. It's a new day. They want to be law enforcement officers because they saw the work that we did in community policing. And that didn't cost any money. You're educating. But he says a lot of progress made by police over the years was quickly dismantled with every blow Tyree Nichols took at the hands of... With every time the mainstream media made that the biggest story in the country, not with every blow, did, did, did not, nothing happened with every blow. We did, we wouldn't even have known that shit happened. That shit happened in a fucking random ass cul-de-sac somewhere in Memphis. Nobody would have knew nothing about that shit. A lot of progress made by police over the years was quickly dismantled with every blow Tyree Nichols took at the hands of police. We saw our 50 years of hard work go down the drain within three minutes. It's oh my <laughs> fucking God. Oh my fucking God. I got no words. Jesus Christ. Wow. Yo, Nicholas, you gotta chill on the mic, man. I don't know what the fuck you doing, man. Um, damn, fifty years went down the drain in three minutes. Shit, and, 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 and normal people to watch this and just be like, mm -hmm, oh wait, yeah, yeah, word, man, word. No, they they believe this shit, I right? they fucking believe it. Salute to um Austin Davercourt the third. Salute to you, man. Appreciate it. This shit's crazy. Why the Memphis City Council is asking MPD for specific details in their next briefing before the council. They want to know what specific changes are being made in the areas of recruiting, hiring, testing, and training. Come back with specifics on what you're going to do different. What have you assessed and what will be done different? Saying that will go a long way in recruiting new officers and retaining those already serving. We also need to make certain, though, that we are embracing those that are laying their lives down every day and that have been honorable law, uh, law officers that have, you know, been exemplary in their service. And she says the council can get behind helping to make the changes happen. Sometimes they say that we don't have the funds for community policing. Well, I feel we don't have the funds not to because it's so important and that's something that we're going to have to do. And so, you know, redirecting funds is, is, is a way to make certain that they're there um, because it's necessary for us to get back to what worked. And we've had a history of community policing working. April Thompson, WREG Investigators. We asked Memphis police for an update on recruiting, including any changes they plan to make now in how they recruit. We are still waiting to hear back. It's frustrating. Um, you know, I it's what we deal with in our office. We see a lot of crime um, and we know it can happen to us. But 
the reality was it did. Reality struck. Shelby County's criminal court clerk becomes a victim of crime after her car is stolen while pumping gas in Cordova. Hello, I'm Greg Hurst. Hi. Uh, that's not really getting stolen. If you're pumping, if you're literally pumping gas in your car and someone takes it from you, that's a, a strong arm car jacket. <laughs> that ain't stolen. Like, 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 that's like, that's like, if that's like, I mean, that's like you fucking pull your wallet out and you're counting your money and somebody snatches it from you. Or like you're fucking standing there and somebody fucking just pickpockets you. That's the difference between that. Pickpocket is stealing. Somebody snatching that shit out your fucking hand is fucking robbery. She, how the fuck could she be sitting there pumping her gas and it'd be just her car gets stolen? Shelby County's criminal court clerk becomes a victim of crime after her car is stolen while pumping gas in Cordova. Hello, I'm Greg Hurst. Hi, I'm Stephanie Skurlock. And while she's frustrated by the incident, she says she has a lot to still be thankful for. WRG Shay Arthur with her story. Shelby County criminal court clerk Heidi Kuhn has dedicated her career to working in the community. But last night, just after six, she became a crime victim herself after her car was stolen from a gas station off Germantown Parkway. You know, this really has me shaken. Um, and to think that even if the criminal court clerk could be carjacked, anybody can be carjacked. There you go. She's calling it what it is, a fucking carjacking. Thank you, white lady. You're not bad. Not too bad for a glider, man. It really has me shaken. Um, and to think that even if the criminal court clerk could be carjacked, anybody can be carjacked. And that's truly what is scary. It became my reality. She says she takes precautions. This time I happened to drive in and I thought I'm going to go in the middle bay right in front of the doors because I thought that would be the safest location instead of the end caps. As she started pumping gas, two cars pulled up, one between her pump and where another man was. There were four men. They were wearing a mask and they got in my car and they took off in my car with the hose still in it. So the gas was going everywhere. A man took off in... <laughs> Damn. Does that sound like a stolen car? Anybody? That's a fucking hell of a scene, man. It's like some shit out the movies, man. Good thing nobody was smoking a cigarette. Coon's car, with two others closely following behind. The gas station was busy. Coon says four people immediately jumped into action to help. Tonight, she commends them. And I greatly appreciated it. One gentleman actually even took off after them to get the tags, and then he came back. So if there's any silver lining, it was those four individuals, and um, MPD was fantastic as well. The officer that came on scene. And MPD was fantastic as well. If this was a sister, what, would, what are the odds that a sister would have said something like that? Zero chance. You think zero? Wow. I think maybe 10%. I think there's a sister out there that would have said it, but it was very low. I think very low. You think zero? Maybe you're right. Maybe you are right. I don't know. But I'm... 1%. <laughs> yeah, this is... Uh... Four people immediately jumped into action to help. Tonight, she commends them. And I greatly appreciated it. One gentleman actually even took off after them to get the tags, and then he came back. So if there's any silver lining, it was those four individuals, and um, MPD was fantastic as well. The officer that came on scene, uh, Josh uh, Thompson, I believe his name was, he was fantastic. Thankfully, Kuhn's car was found fairly quickly outside of an apartment. I feel very fortunate that was recovered. I know that so many people get their car stolen, and it's not. But... Fortunately, my, my phone was in the car, and we used a tracking device on my phone to find out where they were. While she's getting her car back, she still has still concern has the thieves still have some of her belongings and has this message for the public. People want to know what can they do, and I don't have all the answers, but all I can say is, you know, try and stay safe as possible. Keep your doors locked. Make sure that you have your possessions with you if possible. Shay Arthur, WREG.
News Channel 3. Good to see she is okay tonight. Police records show that the four accused thieves were believed to be in an infinity in Nissan. If you know anything, call Crime Stoppers. Oh, man. Wow, man. No one's safe, man. No one is safe. If these are all we did we did Memphis last night, right? Or the night before. But these are all new stories. These are nothing we're doing is retread. This is all new shit. This man emotionally tormented tonight after surviving a robbery at gunpoint. The thief forced him to open a safe at the J. Alexander's restaurant on Germantown Parkway in Cordova. WRG's Ashley Paul joins us live tonight from outside the Memphis Police Department. And Ashley, what can you tell us about this? Yes, yeah, Stephanie. Well, the good news is this happened at around 2 o'clock in the morning on Friday, so there were no customers inside the restaurant. But surveillance video shows the moments where the manager was held at gun gunpoint while the restaurant was robbed. It started in the parking lot of the J. Alexander's restaurant in Cordova just around 2 o'clock Friday morning. According to court documents, the manager of the store was working late to get the restaurant ready for some upcoming renovations. He went to the back parking lot to move his car when he was met by a man with a gun in a white F-150. That's when this surveillance video shows the man... A Mexican or a stolen F-150? I don't know, man. Could be a Mexican, man. In a mask, wearing a hoodie and shorts, point a gun at the manager, who's forced back inside. I'm shocked. A hoodie and shorts? Son, man, don't wear hoodie and shorts, man. Especially this type of time of year. Might be a Mexican, y'all. Never know. Because that's a top class, uh, top drawer restaurant. People who live in the area, shaken by the video, they say this is not what they'd expect at a popular neighborhood restaurant. Oh my goodness, that's terrible. That's terrible. The video continues inside as the suspect walks. No, oh, that's Sunday. <laughs> that walk, man. That walk, that's a Sunday. The video continues inside as the suspect walks through the kitchen area holding a bag. According to court documents, the manager of the store said, quote, I'll give you what you want, just don't hurt me, end quote. He opened the restaurant safe and handed over $6,000. The suspect then took off in the white truck. It's upsetting, residents say, but to some, still not shocking. It has gotten worse, I guess, as um, the neighborhood has changed. More people are moving out this way. Um, it definitely has gotten... Did you hear what she said? Yeah, she said more some people are moving in. Did you hear what she said? This is Cordova. Okay, this this is not this is not um Memphis. This is Cordova. So this is a suburb. So let's get it. She she just said, and I know she didn't mean to say this. I guarantee you she did not mean to say this, but she's just talking and she's being honest, um, unwittingly honest. It has gotten worse, I guess, as uh, the neighborhood has changed. More people are moving out this way. Um, it definitely has gotten, you know, a little worse. Thankfully. Damn, sister, is dropping fat, man. <laughs> Damn, salute, sister. Dr. Umar will call her a cone. Yes, definitely, man. Um, she is, she is a fucking cone, man. God. Damn, um, and that's how most areas go. That that's how everywhere is. That's how my town is. That's just how it is, man. The more that's just it, it just is what it is. So this place is 61.5% glider, 29.2% sun, and then a mix of all the rest. Not a lot of burritos out there, but yeah. So yeah, this place is getting very, very sunny, man. Very, very sunny. And sister, how much you want to bet she moves in the next five years? <laughs> and so on, and so on, and so on, right? Yeah, she gonna she she gonna follow the gliders wherever the gliders are going. She gonna follow. Cause you could tell she ain't a 
she ain't a um a typical sister because she got her hair natural you know what i'm saying she don't look like a typical memphian you know what i'm saying like that rough look she, she looked too um what's the word um normal unbothered. yeah unbothered she don't have like that hardness to her face that that ruggedness that just like spooked out like wild ass like look that the, that that the that the the the, the, the natives have you a suburban chick man okay it has gotten worse i guess as the um the neighborhood has changed more people are moving out this way um it definitely has gotten you know a little worse thankfully the manager was not hurt but the emotional wound is still felt throughout the community doesn't matter about the money it's it, it's whether he had a fatality or not this is the times that we live in it's 2023 so you have to be careful you just have to be careful wherever you are you can never take your safety for granted now, both the restaurant and the manager declined to comment. Meanwhile, Memphis police are still investigating. They asked anyone with any information to contact Crime Stoppers at 528-CASH. For now, reporting live downtown, I'm Ashley Paul, WREG News Channel. Hey, somebody turned it up.